<laughs> the song stopped too soon. I wanted to dance a bit more. Hi. Um, is everybody okay? Yeah. Okay. That's not normally how I start the evening, but... <laughs> Rhonda? Okay, are you guys ready to have your minds blown? Those of you that know us know that we cook people's brains. Now, we have a very short amount of time to actually do this, but I promise you what we're going to do is we're going to cram in some really extraordinary content and our objective is that you walk out of here looking at each other going, holy moly. Are you okay with that? Yes. My objective is to make sure that when you go to sleep tonight, that I'm haunting you in your consciousness. Yeah. And you have a little Irish voice whispering to you, saying, it's your turn, it's your time. This is your window. Bite off more than you can chew and learn how to chew like... I didn't say that because I'm not allowed to swear up here. And those of you that know me know that I don't swear. <laughs> Never. Now, can I just do a little something? Because I want to pick the energy up in the room. Are you guys okay if we do that? Okay, let's stand up for a minute. Okay. Now, I want this audience to interact. So we're going to do a quick interaction exercise. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to put your two feet shoulder distance apart. I want you to put your hand up in the air like this. I want you to turn your hand towards you. I want you to cock your right knee, left knee, in. I want you to pull your hand down like this. <laughs> and I want you to say, oh yeah. <laughs> right, we've got to practice it the other side. Put your left hand up in the air. Cock your right knee in. Turn it towards you. Pull it down slowly and say, oh yeah. <laughs> really good. Now watch, interacting beyond this point is not going to be any more sillier than that. Would you agree? Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay. Now, I want you to turn to a stranger, and I want you to repeat after me. <laughs> Holy moly! Holy moly! Holy moly! What an opportunity! What an opportunity! To meet another human being! Another human being! That's just as sexy as I am! <laughs> now, I want you to lean over and give him a big hug! This is good. Okay, now we're gonna do a quick stretch. Hands up in the air like this. Turn them inside out like this. Swing to the left. Always oh, confuses them. To the right. Bend forward. Nice and slow. Mm, really good. Back. Hands out in the air like this. Put them together really fast. Stop. I'd just like to get our standing ovations over at the beginning of the evening. Is that okay? Take a seat. Now, as you can see, I speak like I make love. <laughs> Very fast. <laughs> I've been married for 12 years, I think. <laughs> and I make love to my wife almost every night of the week. <laughs> On Tuesday night, I almost made love to my wife. <laughs> On Wednesday night, I almost made love to my wife. I'm 45 years old. <laughs> Are you fishing for compliments? Thank you. Um, Don't look at day over 50. <laughs> now. Mitch, we are on a time limit, I know, no, so no, I don't move. really yeah, okay, want I'm you to move. talk about how move. old you okay, are. I'm going to move. We're on a time limit. <laughs> so Celine Egan, every time we come up here, only gives me a very short space and time. Now, so it doesn't matter said, how long she would give us, having said that, yeah. because it would never be enough, because we like, we've, we've got extra information yeah. that we can share. We can talk about this stuff for months, but I want to make sure, in this next 55 minutes that we got, I'm going to make sure that I help you guys to change your lives. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to do something for the people at the end of this that I promise you 
I, I, there's two types of people in this room. There's those in this room that you know, are here because they just want to hear great content and it's not their time, and that's cool. Then there's those in this room that are sick of the content, they understand that it's great, they understand that it's wonderful, but they actually want to move and they want to make a difference in their lives. So there's great. listeners, the ones who are here just to listen, and there's ones that are here to take action. Yeah. And whoever you are in the audience, this is going to be helpful for you. Okay. And, but at the end of the anyone who wants to take action, we've just got an opportunity for you to be able to do that. And we're going to do that. Now, for me to kick off, I need to tell you guys a story. Are you OK with that? Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys a cool story. When I was... A kid growing up, I want you to just imagine you're with me now. And I'm born and raised in Dublin. As you can tell, I'm not Jamaican. I'm born and raised in Dublin. <laughs> and being born and raised in Dublin, uh, we came, uh, the place that I was born and raised was a bit like Iraq. It was, it was, it was very low socioeconomic. It was a very dangerous place. There was not a lot of money. There was a lot of trouble in the area. And the exterior world was influencing the interior, uh, interiority, in, interior selves of people. My father is the second eldest of 25 kids. Very, very switched on, Catholic Irish, very, very switched on, and an extraordinary father. But I grew up in a scenario, and, and I just want to explain this to you. My father worked six and a half days a week. Six and a half days a week. And it's Saturday morning, and I'm sitting in my kitchen, and I want you to imagine you're with me now. I'm in a, we're in a detached house. The kitchen is about two and a half meters by about two and a half meters. I'm sitting there, it's Saturday morning, and I got a game on that day. My father comes down the stairs and he comes into the kitchen. And my father, who's an amazing human being, comes into the kitchen and sits with me. And he made me porridge every morning. He makes my porridge. And we're sitting there and we're eating my porridge. And we're eating, well, we're eating our porridge. He's not eating my porridge. We're eating <laughs> we're, I'm eating my porridge and I'm like, hey, dad, I got the game on today. And my dad's eyes well up with tears. And he says to me, I can't go some." And I'm like, why, Dad? And he goes, son, somebody's got to put food on the table. This was a man that broke his back working six and a half days a week because he loved his family. And this was a man that lived from hand to mouth. Not because he didn't have what was in him, what was necessary inside of him to be able to achieve great things. He did. He just didn't know how to engage those processes. He just didn't know how to step into who he could be. He didn't know how to bridge the gap between the person that he was and the person that was going to be able to influence the world. Now, I want to say something to every one of you. Every one of you that has turned up here in this world, you're a soul operating inside of a physical form. Every one of you that has turned up inside of this world has a deep spiritual quest. Every one of you. And you also have a physical quest. But your deep spiritual quest is what pays in your physical world. Your deep spiritual quest and your ability to fulfill that quest is what pays in your spiritual world. Now, I want to fast forward to 1996. I'm 24 years old. And I went on a deep spiritual quest. And what I wanted to work out was, what is the relationship between net worth and self-worth? And self-worth and net worth. So I set about meeting some of the wealthiest people in Australia. And I became very close with some of these people, including a guy named Willie Porteous, who's married to Rose Hancock, who's married to Lang Hancock, whose daughter is the wealthiest woman in the world. So I set about meeting these people and discussing these concepts with people, and I started to find that there was a common thread amongst people who are prosperous. And there was another common thread amongst people who had a poverty mentality. So people who had a poverty mentality had a common thread. And people who are prosperous also had a common thread. Everybody understand what I just said there? So we've been, t we were asked to come up here today to speak to you guys on the mastery of wealth. Mitch's experience in, in his childhood was about, um, was through poverty, living hand to mouth, living day to day. Who's been in that place? Waiting for the next paycheck. What, having more month at the end of the, uh, your money than money at the end of the month, right? And uh, a common saying, but we've all been in that place. Would you agree? Put your at hand some if point. You've been there. Put, now watch this. Look around the room. Put your hand if you come from that lineage. Look around this room. Now keep your hand up if you want to do something about that. If you want to stop talking about doing something about it or scratching around the outside, if you actually want to do something about it, keep your hand in the air and let me hear an hallelujah. So, we have 
the, we, we've all got the experience of the poverty and, and living through poverty and having that poverty mentality. Mitch, through his experience growing up and later on in 1995, he went and studied, he went and learned about, the, about people who are prosperous because all of us understand that there's a difference between poverty and prosperity, yes? We understand that even though we're stuck in this hand-to-mouth system, this hand-to-mouth cycle, that there's something else out there. Yes, yes? That there's something else greater. And this is what we learnt in terms of people who are prosperous versus people who are poor. Do you want us to share that with you? That's what we're here to do today. We're here to share with you the, the people who, are, uh, who run their, their um, pro- poverty principles versus people who run, run prosperity principles. There are seven of each. Let's go to begin with. So the first one is people who are poor and people who are, uh, live with poverty principles focus on lifestyle. People who are prosperous focus on savings. Now... Lifestyle is anything that depreciates, that anything that decreases in value. Savings is anything that appreciates, anything that increases in value. Now, so, so let me just say something here. People who live in a state of poverty mentality are all about looking good. So they live hand to mouth. So their objective and their money goes into short term satisfaction stuff. So I came from a scenario where my parents were all about making sure that everything looked good. Now, so hand-to-mouth meant that, and and for some people it's it's hand-to-mouth, for some people it's day-to-day, for some people it's week-to-week, for some people it's month-to-month. But people who are masters, because this is about talking about mastering your wealth. People who are masters of their wealth have a horizon mentality. You understand? So hand-to-mouth stuff is they don't know how they're going to pay the rent next month. They just about scraped by this month, but they don't know how they're going to do it next month. Now, when you practice that enough within your life, you come from a lineage of that stuff. When you practice it over and over and over again, it just becomes a way of life. And many of you guys feel that, that in some way you might have come from that way of life. I know I did. Just be straight up about it. If you feel, you know what, there were times when we were hand to mouth. There was times when we were week to week, month to month. There were times when my father's job was threatened where there wasn't any money in the bank. Understand? Now, I want to say something very quickly about that. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. So I want to say something quickly about that. So what happens with a person's money is they're putting money into being able to look good for everybody else. To pretending that things are okay. Do you understand? Now watch, listen to what I'm about to say to you here. There are banks and fraternities that understand that there are psychological things that have occurred within your life that you're not happy about, that make you feel empty or not enough. Understand? And they know and they market to that perceived cause. They market to that part of you. You know, so you people who are hand to mouth, they're like, okay, when I have the can of Coke, then I'm going to feel enough. When I have the sugar hit, then I'm going to feel enough. When the lover turns up, then I'll feel loved. When the money turns up, then I'll feel rich. This is hand to mouth. Do you understand? And there are organizations and fraternities that market to that absence inside of your psyche. And they understand the psyche of the masses and they're marketing to it. Do you understand? Because they know that you're trying to buy that quick fix, that quick book. When you're focused on a quick fix and a quick book, you cannot be focused on a long-term vision. Do you understand what I just said there? Now, we're going to come to that in a minute further, but I want to explain something else. Mitch was talking about the people who don't have any money, right? And these people are focused on lifestyle. But people who also have money but are not wealthy and are not masters, so they've got money, these people also focus on lifestyle because these people will have the brand new TV, the brand new Louis Vuitton bag. They've got all the things to show everybody else that they mean something, that they're wealthy. But when you look into their bank account, every cent that they earn goes into these depreciating things into things that make them feel good for the short term. They're not into things that are long-term, into savings. People who are masters of their wealth focus on their savings. So I'll give you another example. You can have a footballer who earns $300,000 a year and puts all of his money into lifestyle 
right? And that person could be po- is poorer than someone who earns $40,000 a year and puts a percentage of what they earn every single week into their savings account. Because that person is focused on their long-term vision. Because that person is focused on putting money where it's appreciated, not where it's depreciating. Because money flows to where it's appreciated most and it flees from where it's appreciated least. So, so watch now. Let's say you're coming along and you're putting your money into short-term satisfaction. Yes? Your money is going there. You come from a lineage of that stuff. You've watched people around you do it all the way through your life. If you're habitually addicted to doing that, there's a habit that you have to break. In order to embrace the, the in, in letting go of that side of you, you're going to mourn, mourn the loss of that. But to mourn the loss of that and to acquit mourning the loss of it, you have to embrace the new you. To embrace the new you means you don't mourn the loss of the old self. Understand? Because if you're habitually addicted to doing that stuff, to break that habit, there are certain things that you have to implement into your life. We're standing in this room because there are people in this room that are leaders and want to be able to build a big business. Would you agree? There are certain psychological things that have occurred within your life that you have to be able to overcome. Because you, let me tell you something. I watch people make millions of dollars, but when you look in their bank account, they're broke. Now, you show me a person's bank account, and I'll tell you how much self-worth they have. Net worth is self-worth, and self-worth is net worth. People with high self-worth have high net worth. Get what I said? It's nothing to do with the amount of money that comes in. It's that they feel worthy enough to be able to build a big vision and they have a sustainable growth in their money and their wealth. Does everybody understand what I said? Now, this is a very important point. Mitch said it. It's nothing to do with how much money comes in. It's got to do with how you manage your money and your psyche around managing your money. Because we will tell you people who earn less money but are more uh, aligned to being masters and are heading to being masters of wealth because they understand the principles, they understand the laws that govern them. Does that make sense? Okay, let's move on to the next one. So, So, just let me say one last thing on that. If you have a poverty mentality, and you're, so this is where leading us into short term. Yeah, this is the next one. So, poverty mentality and poverty principle is a short term satisfaction. So watch now. Versus long term gratification. Now. This is short-term satisfaction. This is long-term gratification. People who get long-term gratification have a horizon mentality. They have a big vision. Here's the thing. They're around you all of the time. They're your leaders. They're your uplines. They're in this room. I watch them. You know the common thread amongst them? They're all heavily invested in their education. That's the common thread. Do you know why they're heavily invested in their education? Because it pays their bottom line. Now, if you're not putting your money into long-term vision, it's because you're addicted to putting it into short-term satisfaction. Get what I said? Now, your money will go to one of two places. It either goes into long-term vision, and if it's not going into a long-term vision, it's going into short-term satisfaction, and it's continuously doing that. Here's the funny thing. Most of you have earned millions of dollars in your life. You understand that? Where is it? (laughs) Where is the money? (laughs) Do you know where the money's gone? It's gone to the masters. It's gone to the masters. So the money goes to the person who mastered their wealth and has a long-term vision. But if you come from a lineage of short-term satisfaction, then there's certain things you have to break through, certain emotional blockages that you have to break through in order to be able to have a long-term vision. How many of you guys are at a point where you want to break through whatever it takes? Just be honest with me. I know it's not everybody. I get that. It's cool. It's not everybody. Because I know that part of you that's addicted to that short-term vision stuff will be sitting in this audience going, hmm, I've heard this all before. I've read the books. I've seen the tapes. I've listened to the videos. I've watched that stuff. But here's the thing. You're amongst leaders in your organization. I was sitting in a room this morning and I said, okay, those of you who are at 39 Club and up, put your hands up. Those of you, 100 Club and up, put your hands up. Now, how many of you guys have done massive amount of money? And about 20% of them put their hands down. Every single one of the others kept their hands up. Many of you guys have done relationships in you. Every single one of them kept their hands up. Do you know why? Because they stopped doing everything and start doing the right thing. And that's why Celine Egan has us up here. 
Because we want to talk to the guys, the leaders in this room that want to do the right thing and stop doing everything. Because so, everything is just avoiding. Understand? So, in terms of short-term satisfaction, why do you think that people are looking and trying to get this short-term hit? It's because, in some part, they're not fulfilled inside of themselves, so they need that hit every single day to help them to feel like they're somebody. Yes? If I get the new TV, if I get the new car, if I get the new outfit, then I'll feel OK about themselves. So they're trying to quench a thirst inside of themselves. But here's the thing. When you are looking at short term, yeah, when you're looking short term, you can't see up into the horizon. So you don't get this long-term vision, yes? When you're looking in the long-term vision, you get the short-term satisfaction anyway because it comes along the road. Because if you're looking for short-term satisfaction, you're looking at your feet, taking one step at a time, hand to hand, day to day, week to week. Yes, yes? When you have a long-term vision, you're still walking. This is still happening. But you're looking up into the horizon. You're seeing what's ahead. Yes, yes. People who are wealthy understand that it's about looking forward instead of looking day to day. Now, now people who have short term vision treat this opportunity juice plus, which is an extraordinary business. I know this because I've been working with them for five years now, lecturing there and working with their high end guys. And people with a short term, short term vision treat this business like a hobby and they get hobby money. And they wonder, what's the difference? Why am I not able to achieve what everybody else is achieving? Because you've got a short-term vision. Understand? People with a long-term vision in this business have a vision that is beyond their lifetime. Understand? They have a long-term vision, and a long-term vision pays. A short-term vision costs. Get what I said? Long-term vision pays, short-term vision costs. Mitch, do you want to quickly tell the story for you about your short term, like wanting to invest in short term, the, the teachability thing? Oh, yeah. So can I give you an example of this? Okay, so I'm in a seminar, right? I'm 25 years old and I'm a raver. Any of you guys ever been to a rave? <laughs> <laughs> Who's done that? <laughs> Come on, put your hands up. If we were at a <coughs> rave back there, you would have been all going, yeah! <laughs> Woo! That was me! <laughs> Who's done that shit? <laughs> okay, so watch now. Everybody with me? Come on. Okay, so with me? So watch. He's so, just trying to find new rave buddies. No, I was just trying to see. I was just trying to see he wants to come to the festival afterwards with me. So I'm in this seminar, and all of my I'm short term, right? And all of my vision and all of my stuff is going into my next party. How do I get to the next party? How do I get to the next festival? There's a guy who walks into the room at the same time that I was partying and I was educating myself. So I was developing my human development. I was working on my mindset and my leadership. Understand? And it was great because they went kind of hand in hand. You know, you're doing a lot of acid <laughs> and you're learning about <laughs> metaphysics. It's great. You're smoking a lot of pot and you're learning about <laughs> metaphysics. There's a link. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going along because this is what was happening. I was destructing my life. I was going through that stage up until I got to 27 when we have to make those big choices in our lives. What am I here for? Where am I going? What do I do? And what happens to me afterwards? They're the four primal questions you ask yourself after 27. This is why most great singers and actors die at the age of 27 because they're not willing to let go of that primitive part of themselves and they're taken out of society. So that's just a bit of a sidetrack. So watch. So I'm at this event, and this bloke We're on walks time in. Limits and he goes on side tracks. This, this, this bloke oh. walks in, and he walks on stage. And you see what Celine Wilson, Celine, Celine Egan does to me. So we get on stage, and I'm standing there, and I'm on stage. Oh, sorry, I'm standing, sitting there. And this guy comes on stage, and he goes, "Right, I'm running a five-day seminar, and I'm going to be lecturing on the great books of the Western world on wealth." Now, as soon as I heard that, my ears went ching. And he said, this event is going to revolutionize your understanding of money and wealth, and you're going to see the intrinsic link between metaphysics, spirituality, and money, your vision, and your calling. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I'm going to that event. <laughs> then he goes, this event is $5,500. And I went... I'm absolutely not going to that event. <laughs> then he goes, this event is being held in Sydney. 
So I'm going, I'm definitely, absolutely not going to that event. <laughs> Why? Because I had already allocated my money on getting to the next party. Understand? Because $5,000 would have got me out to a full moon party in Thailand for two weeks. <laughs> My mentor beside me elbows me like this. He turns to me, he puts his hand on my shoulder, he looks in my eyes, and he says to me, Mitch, you just became unteachable. I just became unteachable. Because I was not willing to give up the short-term stuff. You know why? Because I thought if I had a long-term vision, I'd lose all the short-term satisfaction. And an actual fact, when you have a long-term vision, you get greater short-term satisfaction. Because, because... Watch this. You standing on stage, guys, and you, when you have a long-term vision and this stuff is happening for you, you're no longer hanging out in bars, you know, using your money to buy short-term satisfaction stuff. Now you're on the back of ships. Now you're being flown around the world because you're closer to the one. And when you're closer to the one, you attract the many. The more people want to buy your product, buy your service, hang out with you, fly you around the world. Understand? They want to be with you more. Get it? <clears throat> yeah, come on. Yep. So, oh, I was going to say something else. Come on. Damn it, I've forgotten it. I've forgotten it, I've forgotten it, I've forgotten it. Oh, yes, no, I haven't. Okay, banks and fraternities. Mitch mentioned it before. Yep. Banks and fraternities bank on the fact that you're looking for the quick fix. That's why um, they can sell a pill that makes you lose weight in, like, five minutes because people are looking for the quick fix instead of the long term. Does that make sense? They're trying to make it easy for themselves. All right, next one. Let's look at the um, uh, poverty principles. The, this one here is a killer for a lot of people, right? When you have a poverty mentality, you put other people above yourself. When you have, when you're a master and you have a prosperity mentality, you value yourself first. When you value yourself first, you are then able to go and assist other people. You fill your well prior to you going and helping everybody else. Because you cannot give from an empty well. Now, I was raised being told that I had to take care of everybody else. Understand? Now, when you do this, what happens is you're instilling into other human beings that someone else is worth more than you. The greatest thing you can teach your kids is to value themselves. The only way you will do it is for you to value yourself. And here's why. Because your children do what you do, not what you say. Yep. Understand? Many of you guys got babies. <coughs> okay, I got three babies. I got three young kids. Very young kids. Now, my kids copy everything I do. When you get, you will reach an age where you're doing that and you're feeling, you know what? I really want my kid to value themselves. And then they start to fall out with you and you wonder why. And they're falling out with you because you're a hypocrite. Because you're trying to get them to do something that you never did. And on top of that, you made it all about them and in the process, you lost out. And then as you get older and they get older, they start to feel as if they owe you. That's why they can't ring you. That's why they can't talk with you. It's why they can't look you in the eyes. It's why they butt heads with you. Because they're looking up to you saying, hold on a minute, you want me to do something that you haven't learned to do? But their subconscious equation really is, if my own mother can't work it out, how am I going to work it out? So you don't just owe it to you. You owe it to your kids. You owe it to your team. You owe it to them. Because a true leader knows to step up and emanate and shine. And when you step up and emanate and shine, other people shine with you. If you look, think about the people that are your upline, the reason you look up to them is because they're star-like. You look up to them because they're guiding you. They're guiding you and they're showing you the way. And I'm telling you now that the way is within. Get what I said? You have to declare your worth, guys, because the universe is waiting for you to declare your worth. But if you're trying to make everybody else healthy, if you're trying to do this business because you're trying to make everybody else's lives okay, you will never succeed. You will never grow. You will never move. You have to start valuing you, what you bring to the table, and putting yourself above others. And when you put yourself above others, what that means is, and you honour yourself first, you fill that well, and then when it's time to give back, you have over and above to give everybody else. You have an abundance of vitality and energy to give other people. Does that make sense? But to get there, to get there, 
it requires a breakthrough. Do, do, tell the story quickly about Kelly Mitch, and quickly, because we are okay. running out of time. So, OK, so watch... Mitch, I'm, I, yeah. one story, okay, so not sight. <laughs> is she teasing me? <laughs> are you going okay, so Kevin, my stories? Yes, can but I, keep Can I take my time? Oh. So watch. <laughs> you know Kelly. Kelly. Ronnie, you know Kelly. I'm in an audience. I'm in an audience, and it is October last year. I'm running a mastermind of money. Mastermind of money is where we teach the masses how hey, to Mitch, master wealth. You think you got the dates wrong. We just have to get it right because it was, was what it are we now? So it was March last year that she was in the okay, audience. Okay, sorry, yeah. yes. March last year she's in the audience. I just, she's correct. We want to get the dates right. March last year we're in the audience, right? It's, and we're in mastermind of money. Mastermind of money is where we teach people how to never have to worry about money again. <laughs> Who'd like to know how to do that? So this woman comes into the audience, and at the, end of the, at the end of the event, she comes up to me, and she's in tears. And she says to me, you've talked about really dire situations. And I said, yep, I have. She said, okay, here's my situation. I'm living on my sister's couch. I'm 48 years old. I have three kids. My husband has left me. She said, up until just before 2008, we bought some properties up in Karatha. Karatha tanked. She said, I'm in $1.2 million in debt. <coughs> million dollars in debt. And I'm living on my sister's couch. She said, how am I going to stop this? I said to her, have you had enough pain yet? She said, yes. I said, all you need to do is everything I'm telling you to do. If you do everything I tell you to do, you will eliminate that debt. But your certainty in what I'm telling you has to outweigh the doubt in what I'm telling you. Because I know that I'm battling with a lineage of poverty mentality that will tell you that I'm lying. Because that lineage is addicted to that state and it wants to stay there. It doesn't want to let go. Because your brain, if it could sit on a toilet and urinate and defecate and eat, it would do that. Because all your brain wants to do is stay safe. It wants to find the least road of resistance. I'm going to put things to you that are going to challenge you. If you uptake that challenge, you will completely and utterly change everything. But you must do everything I'm telling you to do. And one of the things, and her, one of her big things that she was, had to challenge was about putting everybody else first. So, we got that her... that got her into that situation. I got her to build her self-worth. Understand? I got her to get that she had to see she was worth it. What month was it? Later. November. November... Last, last year. year. November last year, she walks into the audience and she comes up to me and she goes to me, she's in tears and she looks at me and she says to me, I did everything you told me to do. Now, you have to understand, I've been working very closely with this woman because when I see someone like that, in that situation, my obligation is to help. So I did everything it took because when you know better, you've got to do everything it takes. She said to me, the bank just eliminated my $1.2 million debt. It's gone. Now she burst into tears, I burst into tears, and the two of us are holding each other, and she goes, I can't believe it. And I looked at her and I said, no, you can believe it. Stop telling yourself you can't believe it, or you'll get another $1.2 million debt. <laughs> Everybody understand? All she did was value herself first. It was the key thing. Understand? We're getting time told. Okay. Right, OK, next one. OK. Inertia. An inspired activity. Inertia is having a glass ceiling. Who recognises that they have a glass ceiling in their finances? Just be honest. If you've got a Real glass ceiling or you've seen through your life, you hit glass ceilings and you bounce off it. Who's done that pinging? And, but you know that outside of that glass ceiling, you know there's a part of you can achieve more. Would you agree? Because outside of our glass ceiling, outside of our questions, we know there's answers. Would you agree? Outside of our problems, we know there's solutions because we have a divine knowing that outside of what is challenging us, there's something more to have. Would you agree? So you have a point of inertia in your life, a glass ceiling that you're not able to get past. Now, everybody has that. Everybody has a level at which it's enough. They've done enough in their lives, money-wise, consciously, subconsciously, where they've done enough. Because maybe their view and their vision was to get their kids through school. And they've managed to get their kids through school. So nothing else seems to have the same drive to them. And they can't get past this glass ceiling. Maybe their vision was to be able to own a certain house or be able to hang with certain people, whatever. Now they're there. They can't get past this glass ceiling. Now, when you're at that glass ceiling and this whole people who are in poverty mentality... 
They use their glass ceiling as an excuse to not grow further. They use their glass ceiling as an excuse to sabotage. Because here's what a glass ceiling is all about. It's about saying, this is, far, this is as far as I can go. And at here, I've got all these uh, expectations. I've got all these people's ideas, the loyalties that I have in, for people in my life. And I'm attached to those loyalties. And I'm, as a human being, my drive is to grow and to exceed, succeed and to achieve things. But let's say we get to this point, right, and we can see that there's something out here, but we don't know how to achieve it. We don't know how to smash through this ceiling. We don't know how to break through it. Because we're human beings designed to want to grow and to want to achieve things, we subconsciously sabotage our wealth, whatever whatever it is, so that we've got something to work towards again. And then we sabotage it so we've got something to work towards again. And then we sabotage it so we've got something to work towards again. So people who live in poverty mentality, whether they've got $5 or $5 million, what happens is is they allow that glass ceiling to dictate to them how much they can have. Does that make sense? So they're more addicted to the... Many of you guys have constructed wealth in your lives. And then you've lost it again. Who's done it? And then you've got it and lost it and got it and lost it because you're more addicted to the process of getting it and losing it than you are of actually breaking through it. Understand? But the master knows to break through. The masses are more addicted to the process of creating it and destructing it and creating it and destructing it and it becomes a cycle and it's part of their lineage because they come from a cycle of that stuff. Does that make sense? So people who, who uh, have that prosperity mentality understand the glass ceiling is there, but they know how to break through that. They know how to go into their toolbox to actually shatter that glass ceiling, to be able to reach a new level and then to reach a new level after that because there's always going to be new levels. Would you agree? When you're a kid, you've got a particular level, like you want to get one certain type of car. Once you've got that car, you're happy. Yeah, But then, oh, you realise that there's more out there. So you strive for the next level, then you strive for the next level. The, th- the first thing you've got to understand in this section is that people who are prosperous understand and take ownership of the fact that the glass ceiling is there of their own making. And then they do whatever it takes to be able to smash through that. So Does to that smash sense? through a glass ceiling, you have to be able to handle what you've got. You have to be able to handle what has happened to you in your life. You have to be able to deal with the emotional triggers that have occurred that have you constructing and destructing your life. That's what the breakthrough is. To be able to harness what has occurred and break through. So the next one... Can I just say one more thing? The people who are masters use the proper techniques. They do the right thing instead of everything. Because I meet lots of people that do everything. They read all the books, they attend all the seminars, and for me, they're not a fit. I'm not looking for those people. They're not, they're not their avatar. I'm looking for the people that are like, you know what, I'm serious, I don't want to waste any more time. I get that I come from a lineage of that stuff. I've read all the books, I've attended all the seminars, I've done all the programs, it hasn't worked, I actually want to get there. Understand what I'm talking about? They've go, you know what, it's time for me to actually break through, I actually want to get there. That's what I'm interested in. Are we making sense so far, guys? Yes? Great. (laughs) Okay, good, we're on track. I think somebody said no. Thank goodness. (laughs) Okay. Shall I start again? Next one. <laughs> Next one is about people who uh, have a poverty mentality have scattered ideas. They have many ideas. They're trying to dig many wells oh, yeah. all over the place. But people who are prosperous have a focused vision. These people have a clarity of calling. They know what it is to here to do. They're here to do. They dig one well, they dig it deep, and they dig it well. So watch. People with a poverty mentality are those people that go, oh, my God, they, this week they've got a great idea. And they're like just completely hooked onto, into that idea. And this is the idea that's going to get them there. Understand? And two weeks later, have a guess what happens? They've got another great idea. And they're running around trying to convince everybody of that next great idea. And what they're doing is they're running around digging loads of wells. These are the sorts of people that would get into business with a park bench because the park bench had a great idea. Does that Understand? make sense? It's like, oh my God, I'm going to get involved in motorbikes and now I'm going to get involved in juggling and now I'm going to get involved in something else. And they're, they're, their ideas are so far scattered that there's no congruency. Does that make sense? They're always looking for something. This aligns with this short-term satisfaction because what it is is they're always looking for something, the next thing that's going to give them the satisfaction. Because it's short-term satisfaction stuff. You understand? They come up with the idea, they want to share it with everybody, and then after a while everybody's like, oh, God, here we go again. 
another great idea. Now the so the master knows to dig one well, like Amelia said, dig one well, dig it deep and dig it well, dig one well, dig it deep and dig it well. But to do that, it has to be congruent with your values, and your wealth lies in your ability to live your life in accordance with your top three values. That's where your wealth and freedom lives. So this is a focused vision. This is when you have one idea. Now, your idea might be helping mums with health. Does that make sense? Some of you, that's your businesses. And now you'll find many ways to do that. So you might run seminars, you might hold talks, you might um, do online things. There's all sorts of different ways that you can do it. But your focus is that one thing. Yes? That is where, that's, that's important because people who are prosperous understand that their focus is just driven to the one thing. One of the things we talk about in Mastermind and Money is that there are three keys of building your wealth. And one of them is having a calling, knowing why you need to build your wealth. Why would this universe give it to you unless you knew what it is you were going to do with it? So watch now. I'm going to make a cool statement. You ready? The clarity of your calling determines the vitality of your life. People with a really clear calling, and this is one of the things you will do in Master Amount of Money with us, you're going to get really, really clear with your calling. Because there's, let's say you have a calling that's out here, and you get really clear with it, yes? But you've got an emotion around money. Can you see that your emotion around money is going to detract you from achieving your calling? Understand? So the degree to which you get to your calling will be tied up in the emotion that you have around wealth. So if you don't, if you don't balance... Your ambitions with your emotions and your emotions with your ambitions, you'll sabotage your calling. So you must be able to have congruency between what you call your wealth and your self-worth, and your self-worth must be at the same measure of the size of your calling. Everybody understand what I said there? Because you may have a great calling, but no self-worth. Now, to balance those things out, there's a key thing you have to do, and that is that you have to overcome your innermost dominating thought. Because I talk about this all the time. Everything we speak about is based on a person's innermost dominating thought. Because your innermost dominating thought has created your outermost dominating reality. If you want a greater reality, you need to do something about your innermost dominating thought. Your innermost dominant thought is the subconscious part of you that overrides everything else. Everything. Outs onto here, the conscious mind can say, I deserve, I'm worthy. But if the innermost dominant thought says, I'm not enough then that will rule the roost. It doesn't matter what you teach a person, how many books they read, how many Tony Robbins seminars they go to, how many events they attend, how many religious or spiritual experiences that they have. If their innermost dominating thought is not congruent with their dreams and aspirations, they will just keep sabotaging their reality. Get what I said? You have to shift that innermost dominating thought. It's the only way to get ahead, guys. Let's keep moving. Yeah, okay, so... Um Right. How are we going for time? We're kind of getting there. 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, no. No, no, that's not true. Are we getting there? No, 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 it's true. That's he not just true. showed me No, 15. it's not true. He I'm just not said timing it here. No, I'm just... <laughs> okay, next one is delusional. <laughs> Segway beautifully. Okay, so watch now. So I'm going to give you the definition of the del delusional. Are you ready? This is really, really cool. <laughs> I just walked straight into that one. There are, <laughs> there are people in this world who are delusional. And here's a delusion. And the reason I'm saying this to you, and this is going to poke the bear a bit, but I want you to know that I'm doing it because I have a deep love of people. I know that the same energy that is used to create the destruction in your life is exactly the same energy that can be used to create anything you want in your life. I know this because somebody sat my ass down and asked me that primal question. Mitch, if you create this much of a mess, you can create anything. If you're not creating your life, you're creating your death. So what are you going to do? So I put my energy into creating my life. A delusion is an affirmation without any commitment. It's a very good thing. Listen to it again. A delusion is an affirmation without any commitment. You got this affirmation that you're running in the world. Hey, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be free. I'm going to educate my kids in the best system. I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to make sure that my kids fly and hang out with some of the greatest educators in the world. It's telling people you're somewhere and you are not committed to being there. It's saying, I am a millionaire. But the, your, the, the actions that you're taking, the voice inside of your head, your innermost dominant thought, none of that is congruent with what you're saying. Now, can yes? I ask a question? Are there some delusional people in the world? Are there some people in the world that are getting around pretending, yeah, woohoo, everything's going to be, but in actual fact, because humans are really transparent, would you agree? Yeah. 
and we're all very good at diagnosing other people's crap. <laughs> Who's good at diagnosing other people's crap? Just be straight up and down with me. And we're really bad at diagnosing <coughs> our own, would you agree? That doesn't, life doesn't have to be delusional. It doesn't have to actually be that way. It's actually very easily sorted out. But what it means is, is that you have to summon the courage. And let me tell you something. I get that picking up the reins of your life and pointing it in the direction that you want may be a challenge to you. I understand that. But should you choose to do so, what sits on the other side of this is your financial freedom. What sits on the other side of this is your tenacity, is your courage, is your joy, is your fulfillment. Because if you're not putting your energy into that vision, it's going into short-term vision, which is delusional. There's a lot of people in this world that are delusional. But we're at a point in time in the world where that doesn't have to be that way anymore. We're breaking through. People are waking up. And let me tell you, Juice Plus is an organization that is cultivating that. Three of you are excited. <laughs> so, Celine, I got their names. <laughs> There's three of them. So, those of you, those are the people who are delusional and those people who live in that poverty are people who tell the world they're somewhere and they don't have any commitment to being there. People who are prosperous are inspirational. They actually lead the way. It's all the difference between show and tell. People who are inspirational show the world that they're there. People who are delusional tell the world that they're there. If you find yourself having to tell the world that you're there, yeah. guaranteed you're delusional. Like every now and then, yes. I meet a human being that gets around in the world and they tell me, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> now, I say to them, is that something you bought a bottle of in David Jones? <laughs> like, is it something you spray yourself with? Shh, 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 shh. Hey, I'm an entrepreneur. And most of the time, they're actually entrepreneurs. The truth about it is, entrepreneurship and the habits of entrepreneurs <coughs> is that they are heavily invested in themselves. Do you know you can go and spend a week with Richard, with, with, uh, Richard Branson on his island? Uh, Rhonda did this. You can spend a week with Richard Branson on his island. And the money that you pay, generally you got it done for free because she's really smart. You get 100000 It costs $100,000 to do this. $100,000. Every cent of it goes into education. So that the next time people come out, comes out, he's educating people. Really, really smart dude. He's creating an avenue to cultivate leaders. Understand? Many of you would like to be a fly on the wall there. Okay. This is the last one. Is it? It is. But we're going to do something after the last one. So don't get excited. Oh, 15 minutes to go again. Yay. <laughs> They've given us extra time. Okay. <laughs> the next one is cause and effect. Now... People who live and have the poverty mentality live in a world of cause and effect. This is actually one of the most important ones. People who are prosperous and live by the prosperity principles live in a world of causing the effect. Now, do you want to explain it? And then no. I'll explain it again. Okay. <laughs> Let's see who does a better job. <laughs> okay. I, I love doing this because... I have this deep inspiration for quantum physics because quantum physics is revolutionising the human mind and it is bridging the gap between science and philosophy and I want to say something to you. You're not just a human being, you are actually a broadcasting system and right now with the tools and equipment that we have, we now know that the human form, the brain and central nervous system broadcasts energy and emits energy up to nine meters around your body. And we can measure that energy only with the tools and equipment that we have now. We've looked everywhere inside of the human form to try to find mind and we can't find it anywhere. So therefore mind does not actually sit within the human form. Mind is out here somewhere. This is where it's in the field. <coughs> it's in the field of potential. Not actual, potential. Now you're a broadcasting system. And the emotional signature that an event has occurred within your life, meaning that your dreams and aspirations have been achieved, that emotional signature is gratitude. The masses live in the, ma in the land of, hey, when the partner turns up, then I'm going to feel loved. When the money turns up, then I'm going to feel rich. When I eat the cake, then I'm going to feel full or enough. That's where the masses live. Now, here's where the masters live. The masters understand that as a broadcasting system, if the emotional signature that an event has occurred within your life is gratitude, then gratitude is the emotional signature that an event has occurred. 
So therefore, if you want something greater to happen in your life, you have to feel a level of gratitude as if that event has already <coughs> occurred. And when you're grateful as if the event has already occurred, it's only a matter of time before that event finds you. But in order, the gap between where you are and that event finding you is dependent on how often you broadcast gratitude into the atmosphere. The word atmosphere means God's sphere. That's the definition of the word. Because there are particles that are collaborating and colliding together within the atmosphere that are trying to bring about what you're grateful for. And what you have within your life right now is all dependent on the amount of gratitude you've ever had within your life. Because everything you have within your life, when you got it, you were grateful. So therefore, to create the reality that you actually want, you must experience gratitude that is beyond your comprehension. And you must attach that gratitude to a vision of how you want your life to roll out. And you have to broadcast into the atmosphere with intensity, a frequency, as frequently as possible, so that these particles can collaborate and collide together to bring about what you love. So the master knows to turn up before you arrive and wait there until you turn up. And this is how we create a reality. But the master knows to do that if you have subconscious motives that are, you're not smart enough, you're not intelligent enough, you're not wise enough, you're not sexy enough. That is what you are up against. That is sorted out in 20 minutes. And you will never go through that again. That subconscious equation will never harass you like that again. At that point, you become unstoppable. Your leaders took that motive, did something about it, did the process, and got clear. Everybody understand what I said? Yes. Have I done a good job? <laughs> I'm just going to do, do a different job, not a better or worse one. So, cause and effect. Those who are in poverty mentality live in the land of cause and effect. What that means is their mentality says, when I see the money, when my partner agrees, when life falls into place for me, then I'll go and follow my dreams. Then I'll go and live my life. So they're waiting to see it before they believe it, yes? Causing the effect is experiencing it now as if it's already happened to you. Is like Mitch said, turning up before you arrive and then waiting for you to get there. Rather than waiting for it to happen and then stepping into it, they step into it first internally and therefore the last thing that experiences that their reality has changed is their physical world. The last thing to show them that things are different is it starts to show up in their physical world. They already know it's different. And they know it's different because they've experienced it internally before they experience it externally. Anyone a fan of Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor, when he did his most recent fight and he did the um, press conference after the fight, within the first 30 seconds, somebody asked him, how does this feel? And he said, this feels really good. But, he says, it's not a feeling I've not experienced before. I'm familiar with it. I've been here before. He already had experienced it. It felt great, but he'd already experienced it before he won the title. Does that make sense? He was already there. People who live in prosperity understand that they can be there and they can be prosperous before the universe shows them the money. Is that, does that make sense? And that's not just in money terms. That's in energetic terms. It's in vitality terms. It's in terms of your businesses. You can achieve whatever it is you want to achieve if you're there internally prior to you getting there physically. Yes, yes? If you're waiting the other way around... I'm telling you now, I've never seen somebody sit and meditate and a bag of money fall out on the sky <laughs> on top of them. If you know a meditation that does that, let me know. But I've never seen that happen. Does that make sense? It, you have to cause the effect. Now, let me, have, let me show you... I'm ignoring you. Let me show you these poverty principles and prosperity principles all together. There's a common thread with people who are prosperous. People who are prosperous, who is their focus on? Can anyone guess? Themselves. It's not about working and making it about everybody else. Their focus is on themselves. People who are prosperous, do they live day to day? How do they live? Long term horizon. Does that make sense? People who are prosperous understand the bigger picture instead of watching moment for moment. 
Yes, yes. So there's a key thing about what's going on for these people. And the key thing is where they have their focus. Is it what are they focused on? Are they focused on the individual thing? Are they focused on cause and effect? Are they focused on day to day? Or are they focused on what it is they're here to do? Are they focused on how they can bring service to the world and by, by making sure that they take care of themselves first? Now, would you like to see how that ha operates in action? Are you yes? guys okay with that? Okay. So, so what we want to do is I want to play a quick I'll game with you guys. I'll leave that back up for a few minutes. Just I want to play a quick game with you guys. Are you guys okay with that? So, yeah, five of you. I need. We Are you okay with that? We need. <laughs> we Here's need five people. I need five people up here. Let's that go. Haven't, that haven't worked with us before. Never met us. I need five people up here. Five. Let's go. Now, can we give them a round of applause? Okay. There's <coughs> so a couple of things I want to point out here. Well, it was a good team effort if you were trying to mate with someone, yes. <laughs> now, let me point something out. Did it take some time before people twigged what they had to do? Yes. Meanwhile, the asset kept diminishing. When you focus on something that you've already got to try to build something greater, you're always focusing on a diminishing asset. Understand? It gets smaller and smaller. And as it gets smaller and smaller, did life become more difficult? <laughs> then what started to happen is people started to clamber on top of one another. <laughs> and then I even heard somebody say, oh, I can't carry everyone. <laughs> like, starting to feel depressed that they couldn't hold on to this state. Now, here's the thing, right? Games and how you play them are a direct reflection of how you're acting in life. So I kept telling them what to do. Get off the carpet. And what I was doing was, I was outwardly influencing them. How was he outwardly influencing them? Pointing. By pointing. By showing them something or a way to do it. Does that make sense? Then, so when, what did you all do? Do you yeah, listen to Mitchie, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. Now, Focus, then listen what, to At one point, when I said, all you got to do is get off the carpet, everything twigged. Yeah. Yeah. One of the girls behind me said, I was going to do that in the beginning. <laughs> but I can guarantee you that that human being, that person, in her life, will not listen to herself. <clears throat> and she gives up on herself and listens to other people. And she does this out of a loyalty, and we all do it, guys, out of a loyalty to the other people around us. Because we want to look good. We want to achieve. We can't, we, because we're being outwardly influenced, we're inwardly lost. We don't listen to ourselves. When you're outwardly influenced, you're inwardly lost. When you're inwardly fluent and you listen to yourself, that's when you become outwardly influential. To become inwardly fluent, you must have a vision that's bigger than the pettiness of your existing life. Doesn't mean that that pettiness is bad, it just means that it's petty in comparison to what's achievable. Understand? But if you have something you want to achieve, I can guarantee you that if you have money in the way, hindering you from achieving it, and that's creating an emotion because it's tied up with your self-worth, and your self-worth was caught up in an innermost dominating thought that says, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not sexy enough, I'm not able to achieve. Understand? So, what was happening here in the game, you were being directed to look somewhere. Right? And as you were being directed to look somewhere, even though it was getting smaller and smaller, you, what happens is, is that your zone of vision gets drawn into where someone from the outside is drawing you to. Does that make sense? So even though you could have gone and stood on chairs and done everything, you could have gone and sat on somebody else's lap, you could have done anything, you, you went and kept going back there. Now, as much as yours was good because you found this one getting off the carpet, as soon as we did it again, you went back to the same thing. Instead of looking up to the horizon and going far out, I could do it in so many different ways, you keep going back to the same thing because it gets you through. Does that make sense? Now, when you're doing this, your focus is directed to where somebody from the outside is directing it to. Does that make sense? Now listen, can you hear it? 
Can you hear it? Can you hear those projectors running? They've been running the whole time. But because you haven't been focused on it, you don't see what's around you. You don't see the potential. You don't look up to the horizon and go, look at what is available to me. I'm just going to allow myself to be directed and outwardly influenced by somebody else outside of me. Does that make sense? And here's the thing, guys. This is your time. Understand? You, whatever you focus on gets bigger. Now that we draw your attention to those, to those monitors, your focus gets bigger. You're able to actually hear it. Here's what I'm certain of. Much greater than anybody else's doubt. What is required around you in order for you to ex achieve anything is around you. It's always been there. You just haven't had your attention on it. You've been outwardly influenced instead of inwardly fluent. If you draw within and focus your attention on it, you can achieve anything. I have to say something else as well. Those of you sitting in the audience going, oh, they could have just stand on the chair. Just go and do this. Just go and do this. These are the guys that are standing up here. You are all the bleeding experts sitting down there, but they're the ones that are up here dancing away, making fools of themselves. Does that make sense? It's easy to sit in the reins and to go and to, and to direct them, but not to get up and do it yourself. Does that make sense? So that's how you play the game. How you guys played the game is exactly what your innermost dominant thought is telling you. So if somebody's saying to themselves, I was going to do that first, right? That's how you play the game. You don't listen to yourself. I can't carry everyone. That's how you play the game. Because you think that you, your job is to carry everyone through life. Does that make sense? Some of you were standing on the outside just going, oh, this is just not going to happen. And you kind of play the game by giving up. Does that make sense? Because there's three types of people in the world. People that watch it happen, people that make it happen, and people that wonder what the F happened. <laughs> Would you agree? They get to their deathbed and they're like, what the F happened? So, how many of you guys are ready to make it happen? Woo! Oh, yeah, yeah, really? Yeah. Really, really? Okay, can we can give I, these guys a minute? Well, just I, before you go anywhere, I want to do something for you guys. Now, we want to say thank you because you guys got up out of your seats. Yeah. You stood up here, you danced, you played the game. So, we want to reward you for taking action. So, what that means is we're going to give you tickets to our next Mastermind and Money event. Not just for you, but for five of your team. Right? Yeah. On top of that, on top of that, you're going to get three specialty Zoom calls with Mitch and myself, and those Zoom calls are going to help you figure out the difference between motivation and inspiration. They're going to help you to build a congruent team, and they're going to show you how to build your net worth via your self-worth. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. You guys get that? Make sure you see me before you leave so I can get your names and I can give you those, that deal. Well, Thank you so much. Now, can you see that those guys made a choice and they acted on that choice? When you choose an act, you're always rewarded. Can you see that the value of what they just got here from getting up here is ridiculous? Because we're going to work with their team. Is that pretty cool? That's an awesome thing to have happen. Right. Yes. Okay. So, let's talk about what we have coming up. Let's, let's okay. talk about our offer and then so, we're going. here's what we're going to do for you guys. How many of you guys would like to have the same thing happen for you that's just happened for these people? Put your hands up in the air. <clears throat> so, okay. what we do is we run our Mastermind and Money seminars. Our Mastermind and Money seminars are paid events. Close, the closer you book in to the date, the more you will pay. At the moment, if you were to book in online, it will be about $27. But our, as we go through next week, the week after, that price starts to increase. Now, the reason we've kept it at that price is basically because Celine had asked us to do this for Juice Plus before we do the next increase. So, that's a two-day seminar on us teaching you about wealth and showing you how to implement the wealth principles into your life, making sure that you never have to worry about money again. Many of you guys have ever been to that event? Put your hands up. Okay, was that a cool event? Yes. Did it change everything for you? Yes. It's the game changer. Now, that... The, the link that you have there will give you that offer. However, what we want to do is we want to offer you something special just for you JPers. So, for those of you who are serious and want to help your team as well as yourselves, what we're going to do is we're doing an exclusive offer. This we're, is only for Juice Plus. And it's only available, like it cuts off to, uh, Saturday night, that's it. And there's only a limited amount of tickets that we're, we're allowing in to that group. Now, what that is, is that you pay $1.99. And by paying $1.99, you get a ticket for yourself 
and five of your team to come to Mastermind and Money. Plus, you get three bonus Zoom calls with Mitch and myself, and that, those Zoom calls are going to help you to build your teams. I'll just show you what we're going to give you in the Zoom calls. The first one's going to be about motivation and inspiration. So and the how difference. Stop motivating your team and start inspiring them to actually do the work. Not only your team, motivated. also yourself, right? Yes. The other thing is, the next thing is that you're, we're going to show you how to build a congruent team. How to build your team that's congruent. Yes? How to deal with rejection. How to love the rejection. Who would love to know that? How to love the, the how, rejection. How to turn your rejection into actually making you build Into your business. inspiration. The last one is about turning your net worth into self-worth. Um, turning your self-worth into net worth. So it's all about the congruency between your net worth and your self-worth. Those Zoom calls are Mitch and myself adding as much time as we can, as much energy as we can. It's an interactive session, so you get to ask questions and we get to workshop all of those things for you. Great? So the total of that is $199. You get to bring five of your team and you guys get those three Zoom calls with Mitch and myself. Cool? So it's us working with you. Is that a pretty cool deal? Yeah. Is that a pretty cool deal? Yeah. Okay. It lasts until Saturday night. We're only taking 100 people. We're only taking 100 people on that deal because we have to be able to cater for it. So we already spoke to all the leaders this morning. Most of them have taken their position in there. So you will see people like Shani Caruso. All of those guys will be at that event. And this was the event that kicked all of them off. Understand? So our objective there is to completely smash. I just want to say something. Let me, let me point something out. You know, I just want to take you back to that time when I was dealing with Kelly. And Kelly walked up the front of the stage. And when Kelly walked up the front of the stage, guys, and sat down with me afterwards and told me her situation... And then a number of months later, I'm sitting with Kelly and she sits down with me and goes, the bank eliminated the debt. All she did was everything I told her to do. The system is there for you. You just have to follow it. The first thing we got to do is we got to show it to you. Understand? But because of that situation with Kelly, guys, we're morally obligated to deliver this message. It's a moral obligation. We're morally obligated to help people with their finances because if we know the tools that can get somebody like Kelly yeah. from being in a million dollars of debt to absolutely clearing that debt, but it's not just the debt that she cleared. It's about the fact that she got to have a different life for her kids. She gets to be a mum yeah. now. She gets to have her focus on the things that are important to her. That's why it's so important for us. That's why we're morally obligated to offer that to everybody who wants to totally transform their lives. Now, this isn't for everybody. What we do, guys, we and like we, what we do is amazing. These wealth principles that you'll learn in Mastermind and Money will absolutely blow your socks off and it will totally transform your wealth. But as a result of that, we can only really work with people who really want to go there. Yes? We're looking, for, we're looking for a fit and a match, guys. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a fit and a match. I'm looking for people that actually are serious and they actually want to move and they're willing to do the right thing and stop doing everything. Now, guys, nobody likes time pressure. And this is the gap in your life now. We're in this room. This is the moment. We can't make that choice for you. You have to make the choice. If you want to do it, follow the link and you get the deal. It was great talking to you guys. They're flashing finished at me. Thank you for seeing us. <laughs>